I felt as and welcome. This is the video that accompanies my latest kit, which is this mushroom, along with all the trimmings, all the little grass bits, the mound, the wood slices. So let's talk you through the kit. So here we are. This is the kit that can be found on my Etsy shop and on my website. Let's open it up and see what you've got inside. This is the leaflet all about where to find the video and information about what's in the kit. This is the code for your needles. Um, this is from Heidi Feathers, so she does a lot more needles, but you'll see the ones that I've included are the 32 silver, 36 green, 38 red, all triangular. This is just a little care instruction for the item you're making up and a bit of info about me. So we've got the, <coughs> excuse me, Scarlet Wool, Cheviot Slithers, this is Bode, this is Calm, this is for the grass, this is for the underneath of the mushroom top itself. Let's get a few more pieces out, let's put them to the side. These are the green locks to help decorate up the mushroom. This is to do the little sort of ferny bits with the pipe cleaners, that's for the grass. Then we've got a glue strip. Let's just get this out. This is your wood base. This is the glue strip which we'll cut across and you'll put a strip there and a strip there to help stick your mushroom to the base. This is to go around the mushroom stalk to help do the little frills. Then you get needles in here, finger guards and a mat and that is everything. So let's get started. So I've popped everything out around me and we're going to start with the stalk. So take a pipe cleaner, fold it in half. And if it's folded in half, it's six centimetres. We need to knock it down to five. So just take the end and turn it down an inch. You don't even have to definitely measure it. Just take a little bit off the top. And I just twist it a bit to make it easier for it to stay together. I always find it's nice when I'm doing something long um, to wrap wool around a pipe cleaner it just makes your life a lot easier. So take a section of the white um, Cheviot Slithers and we'll just hold um, one end, try and keep it fairly flat. And we took the whole slither, I didn't break it in half or anything, which we might do a little bit later. And you're holding and twisting. And as you can see, it... Um, pretty much stays on at one end so you should be able to get the twist all the way to the other end before you can start felting it a bit um, and I've obviously got too much wool there so I'm just going to take a little bit off the first layer is just to get it on or we twist it back down <laughs> I'm not going to pull it off because the first layer it doesn't matter if there's a few bumps because you're going to put quite a few layers on top of this sometimes when you twist back down at the top you end up with a big bumpy um, a bit where you've turned around so quite often I'll break it off so take your silver needle the 32 which is a big thick chunky needle perfect for if you're learning how to felt and you're a beginner and start stabbing because it's less likely to break um, if you hit the pipe cleaner so nice gentle tapping motion you're not stabbing really hard um, you don't want the needle to go too far through all the time so just nice gentle tapping motion and we're just roughly felting this on just so it stays there now one end is going to be the base and then one end is obviously going to be the top of the mushroom it doesn't matter too much whether making these flat or really well felted top and bottom but we do want the stalk to be well felted all the way round because we're going to attach the bottom to the grass mound and the top is going to attach to the mushroom you don't need to overly felt either end of it so I'm spending probably at least a good minute to two minutes just going over this first base layer but we are going to add many more layers in a minute so um, and this just definitely make sure the foundation is solid and not going to slip at all and the 32 needle is just perfect for this you can use a 36 um, or a 38 but uh, do be careful around the pipe cleaner so take another section and then this time I am going to split it down because I just want to keep it nice and flat if you have quite a large um, hole slither you're more likely to get big bumps and we want it to be a nice smooth even stalk all the way up and it just helps if your base layers are even as you're working it up so there we go work it all the way up and around exactly the same 
go round and felt it for a minute to two minutes just to make sure it's attached. I'm going to speed up bits throughout this video and I'm also going to jump little bits where it's obvious what we're doing. So there we go. So I spent, like I said, at least a minute to two minutes. And then same again. I was just removing some vegetable matter from the wool. It's quite normal for you to get little pieces of um, vegetable matter. It's like grasses or straw or food. It could be anything that they, they can't get everything out of um, the wool when they process it. So just pull those bits out if they're a bit big. Um, if it's in the underneath layers, it doesn't really matter too much. But once you get to the top layer, you definitely want that to be free of vegetable matter. And again, so this is the third layer. Now this is um, a clover pen and I really recommend this for speeding up your work. And I have two 40 triangulars. So because these are finer needles, I don't start using them till we've got a little bit of distance between um, the wool and the pipe cleaner. But again, I have started using it and you just use it very carefully um, and very lightly and it really helps speed up the process. But I do go back to the 32. Most of this I did with the 32 needle. So again, another layer and it's starting to form, you can see. Now you would like one end to be slightly, the top end that's going under the mushroom cap to be slightly thinner. So you can see that's gonna be the thicker end and then as we're working up, I'm just letting the wool sort of taper off a bit earlier. And work that round again for another minute and then add another layer. We're nearly, probably a couple more. We're probably going to be getting to the uh, layer that we're going to felt properly all the way over. So we have um, quite loosely felted this at the moment. It is not really firm. So needle felting you'll know when you're working the wool, um, it'll get to a point where it just starts to firm up nicely. And that's when it's sort of properly felted. And you can continue and over felt, so, um, but it does take a long time to over felt something. So nice and even and flat in the hand as you're putting the wool on. And we're getting almost to the top layer. And it's just going to be of the same wool. So I can see there, we're going to have to add some more because when you felt something firmer, it's going to shrink down a bit by about a quarter to a third. So there's the base. Like I said, you don't have to panic too much that that's perfect. So I'm quite happy. See, it's quite squidgy. Height wise, it's still just at the five. You don't really want it much taller than that. And across width, width ways, it's a one and a three quarter at the bottom and about one and a half at the top. So it's going to shrink down a bit. So now we're going to work it all the way over. You can use the 32 needle or the 36 and you can see that I'm felting a lot closer and we're just going to spend quite a bit of time. It does take a good 15, 20 minutes and just enjoy the process and we'll work it all the way through, all the way around and it will start to firm up nicely. Now I didn't think um, it needed to be a much smoother surface. I was quite happy with the 32, but you can go over it again with the 36 and get it a little bit smoother if you want. But as you can see, it's starting to firm up quite nicely. Here we are just finishing up towards the top and I would definitely leave a little bit fluffy right on the top. I'm not, cause, cause we'll spread that out a bit when we attach it. So still five, and then it's gone, it's about one and a half there. See how it's shrunk a little bit? And just under the one and a half there, it's not much smaller. So this is going to be um, where we do the frills. So I'm just sizing it up and checking and seeing we're not attaching it just yet, but I'm just folding it in half and I'm just, cause I can wrap it round right now easily. We're gonna check the distance. So this is pre-felt felt is um, normally 100% wool and it's a lot firmer and harder to felt into so I've supplied you with pre-felt which is easy for you to um, felt through with the needle so we just folded it in half and then cut it to the right size it's okay if you have a tiny overlap I do think I trim it down a tiny bit more when I attach it but you want it to be as close as possible 
and there is going to be a tiny join at the back of it so um, you do have to decide when you do your mushroom which is front and which is back so I'm just taking the 32 and I'm just going all along the top to felt the top pieces together nothing major and then we're just going to put that aside and um, pick it up later once we've done a bit more so there we go so that's ready and I'm happy with the distance and the width all the way around so put that to the side so next up we are going to do the top bit which um, I have given you lots of red wool for this you could if you're making your own at home and you're watching this video use core wool on the inside but when you get to the edges of the mushroom and you start to put the red on sometimes the white can felt through so I've decided to avoid that and just give uh, give you all red and it's lovely wool so take um, quite a long piece probably about 20 inches and start rolling it up nice and tightly and I'm sort of twisting it round as I go it's almost like you're not making a it's like a triangular shape and you just twist it and move it across each time um, and you're just felting it up into a little not quite a ball you want it to be a bit flatter but don't panic too much about the shape you're just forming a firm inside piece at the moment so take your 32 and start felting that through and we don't have to felt it solid at this stage we're just going to keep adding and adding get the shape that we want and then we're going to felt it firm after that so I'm just going around the edges here just to stop the edges moving so I go through top and bottom and then just around the edges a little bit before we add the next layer and it is just a case of working it up so that's another quite a long piece there and you should have more than enough wool in this kit. I really worry about people running out of wool. <laughs> so hopefully you've got enough. You might even be able to make another small mushroom to go alongside, just a little one. Um, so here you can see I'm just spreading the slither out a bit so it's not too chunky. You want it to be a little bit flatter. And people call it slither. I call it slither. It's completely up to you. There's no right or wrong. And there's no right or wrong in needle felting. I do have to keep saying that. If you think you want to do something differently to the way in which I've done it, it's fine. If it works, it's fine. Just do it. There's no right or wrong. Don't let someone tell you you have to do something a certain way. You don't. Um, so here we are. You can see as well that felting those edges in before you go on to the next layer is quite important because it kind of sort of moves quite a bit otherwise. So it's not terribly big at this stage so we're going to do another one going round and then we'll go around the edges so what are we looking at two and three quarters and then height wise it's about two inches height at the moment so we're going to make it a bit bigger so next see how we've got quite a way to go let's take another long section and I'm going to spread it out a bit because this one we're going to wrap around the outside and build it up um, in width. So I tend to just uh, secure the first bit just to make your life a little bit easier. And then you're going to wrap it round. And this can sort of slip. So that's why I will sort of felt it as I go a little bit just to secure it. And you can see you're just um, increasing the width there quite nicely. And then we can build up the top of it. So we'll increase the width again probably after this and then build up the top and that's your mushroom shape forming quite easily so it's not too difficult you might want to do a slightly different mushroom shape that's absolutely fine mushrooms come in all shapes and sizes so when you wrap it around the edges you do have to work it around with the needle quite a bit to stop it from moving too much and start to work out as you do this one side of it will end up being or work it a little bit flatter and then the other side you can start to see which side you're going to have the dome on and here the clover pen really helpful make sure you buy a branded clover pen that's actually set that says clover on it on the packet and 40 triangulars 
are the best needles to put in it. It comes with three needles and they might not work that well. I have a full video on multi-tool needle holders. So we're going to do another layer all the way around the outside. And again, I was just spreading it a bit so that it's not too chunky. So the first bit, just attach it so it stays on and work your way around. And here I'm just, you can see that that, that bit just to the right side of it is going to be the dome. You can see it's sort of almost forming naturally for me. And then attach the other end and then spend again at least two or three minutes just working around and keeping that edge um, part on so it's not slipping. So I'm starting to see I need a bit more. And once we firm it up, as I said, it will shrink down. So it's about three, I think, across there, three and a half at the moment. So we're going to keep going another layer. That's looking a lot wider now. And you can see that the bottom bit, that's looking quite flat. It's almost that you end up putting the edge a bit lower down on one side than the other. And then you can start to felt a, a bit of an angle. Um, the direction in which you push your needle is the direction in which the felt will go. And you can see that sort of formed a flat base quite nicely for me. And then if yours hasn't, that's not a problem because you're just going to build up one side of it by putting um, lots of red wool on it. So four, definitely four to four and a quarter there. So I'm quite happy with the width and now we're just going to build up the top so I break off um, some smaller strips and just literally place them over the top side that you want to be a dome now if yours doesn't have a dome you could do a little ball like we did at the center place that on top and then place some flat bits over the top of that and that would build up a dome very quickly and now this is um, a multi-needle tool holder with four needles in it, 440 spirals. Um, and it works really, really well. I don't, you know, you don't have to get all these tools unless you're sort of going to be doing a lot of needle felting because I don't use this one that much, but it just helps put the wool on where I can see where it's going to be a lot quicker. Um, so we're going to do another layer building up the top. So take a section split it in half into smaller sections, just two to three inches in length, and just place it over the top. Don't worry about join marks yet. If the wool's sort of showing where you've added it and the directions, we can cover those up in a sec. And vegetable matter, always removing little bits. So this wool is from World of Wool and it's uh, quite well processed and it doesn't smell of sheep at all. Um, some of the wools that you can buy, if they haven't been washed that much, they can smell a bit sheepy. And it's alright to have a little bit of a smell, but you wouldn't want the wool to be too smelly. But this wool, because it's um, washed, carded and dyed, it definitely doesn't smell sheepy. And World of Wool is a UK supplier that we have. With, they have absolutely tons of wool. It's just amazing. I've done a video visiting them. So, height-wise, it's about the three inches. So again, this is very loosely felted. So when we felt it down, it's going to sort of shrink a bit. Now, there was a join mark on either side I could see. So I'm just taking a thin layer of the red wool and just covering up that join mark now. And then there's one on that side. You can see that that's obviously going to show quite a bit, whereas the rest of it looked fine. But you could felt it all the way over and then cover up join marks if you're not sure if you've got any showing. So back to the clover pen, that's also quite useful at this stage to go all the way over it. But here's the 32. And you're just going to do exactly what you did with the stalk and spend. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, <laughs> what's the word? Beat around the bush here. It's going to take you a good 30 to 40 minutes to go all the way over it smooth it over needle felting is not a fast process but enjoy it um, don't rush it 
just enjoy the process and as you can see how much it sort of depresses in that's it actually firming up quite nicely under there so you're going to work your way all the way around the top so we're not going to go right down to the bottom edge we're going to work the underneath as well I'm sorry <laughs> there's a lot to felt here so you're going to work the underneath and you're going to work the top but don't so you can see how firm it is and how squidgy it is don't go right down to the edge bit um, until the last section because you don't want to lose the shape you want it to stay qu quite wide so just work your way down and then leave the bottom centimeter and here we go you can show you here um, I've got a bit of a, a a join mark there that's showing just because I'm felting this bottom edge in just once to stop it floofing out too much and then I'm going to go back up and do the rest of the top so when we get to the bottom edge bits like this I like to do them just off the edge of your mat um, and it helps give a little bit of an angle and then just I would felt down see that bits all fluffy there just work your way carefully and just do the edge bit last that's all I'm saying and so when you're doing the inside holding it up like this helps you get the angle for where you're felting into so there we go so that took quite a while that's all the edge bit there that I did I worked down to at the end so we're just going to finish by doing the edge bit and you can see how much it depresses in as you do it so you just wouldn't want to lose that too early on so that's why I leave the edge bit right to the very end and now I'm working my way around and just doing that edge bit and then we're going to do the underneath of it and you can cover up any join marks if you're worried about those any lines that are showing so there we go I'm just working my way smoothing around that edge and there we go it's all done there's a little join mark there I'm just going to cover up nice thin piece of wool place it over the top and then felt it down and that will cover it up and that's the beauty of carded wool as opposed to tops wool which looks like hair it's all in one direction um, and actually the fern wool is a tops wool so tops wool it's very hard to disguise the join marks if you were making a mushroom top out of it so there we go just felt it all over and that's covered it up and give it a little squidge make sure it's even all the way round you can change shape quite a bit by squidging and just depressing that in a tiny bit so it finished up being two and a half I would say and four across four inches across so next up we're going to do the spots on the top so you can see I put more spots on the left one <laughs> it's up to you how many spots you put on so you take a very small piece of white wool and you're going to take different amounts of white wool to do different size spots so you literally just roll it up in your fingers lots of rolling in your fingers really helps you and then I'll take the 36 or the 38 needle 36 is fine and I felt through the middle and then I start shaping the edge of the spot it's just practice um, I think this is the easiest way to do spots sometimes I think do you cut out bits of white felt I haven't given you stuff for that don't cut up your white felt for it <laughs> um, I don't think so because you still have to really felt the edges so I think this is the easiest way of doing it and you very gently just sort of move the edge in and around a bit be careful it's almost like you're you're pulling it round a bit with your needle but be very careful because some needles can break when you sort of drag it across um, the the wool but this is a small one nice and simple and just sort of squashing that edge bit in it's a little bit bumpy there and see that doesn't take too long we're going to do a nice close-up for you so pop the ball on 
felt through the the middle so you've definitely got the middle bit attached so that when you sort of draw the shape with the needle around the outside of it it doesn't move because you can see all the edges are really fluffy there so just going to work on the edge it's a bit tricky because trying to keep up close and in shot and show you and try and look over the top of it so you see there I'm just sort of pulling it in a bit but that bit there did you see the needle bend you do have to be a bit careful there you go so that's just I'm just sort of dragging those extra bits in and if you have too many white bits of uh, fluffy wool still hanging around at the end trim them off with scissors you'll see me do that in a second so there we go working it all the way around there we go and then just trim off the excess bits with scissors and blow it away as you do it so it doesn't land on your red wool so I do groups of one twos threes fours varying sizes um, you could do even all the way over do whatever design you want of spots on the top um, but this way <laughs> sort of get away with not doing too many because they get a little bit annoying after a while <laughs> And I didn't, this is my third mushroom um, at this stage. But I, th I think the one before I did had more spots. And like, that looks nice, actually. That's good. That's, I'm happy with that. And you can see as you turn it round, if there's a bit of a gap. So I think there's a bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to do one there. Could have done a couple more on the other side. But I think there's definitely a gap there. So I'm just going to pop one there. And felt it in there we go a little trim with scissors pretty happy with that so next up we're going to do the gills underneath and I've just used um, a wool yarn so I've supplied you with um, this is a wool from world of wool I might change this in a future in the future to um, a, a twisted wool yarn um, we'll see. So it does work quite well, but you do have to twist it as you go. So take um, a piece. It doesn't matter if you cut off a section, but personally, I would just leave it attached. And we are going to start by attaching it in the middle with the 32 needle. And then you're going to work to the outside, twisting it a little bit as you go. And then you don't want it too close to the outside edge. You do have to be careful that when you felt through you're not felting right through the mushroom top. So that's partly why I didn't give you a white base as well on the inside, because you'll be felting this. And at the edges, you might catch some of the white wool and fluff it, um, sort of felt it to the outside edge. So when you get to the edge, do a little turn, felt it in, and then go back down. So this is, it's quite simple, the structure in which we do it. And we're going to do sort of a cross shape first and then fill in the quarters. A little bit fiddly, but there's um, there's other much longer ways of doing gills. But I think this um, works quite well, and I've done this on quite a few of my other mushrooms. So work to the other side and back, and I have speeded this up because it would be very boring. And then I do another one alongside that side and fold back, and then another one alongside the opposite side. So you can see how I haven't gone right to the edge and you can cross it over in the middle. It doesn't matter if it gets a bit chunky because it's going to be covered up by the stalk. And then I think it's best if you swap sides and do the cross shape because it helps you even out the gills and it helps you get the angles right for the middle bits so that they sort of do fan round quite neatly. So do one two three four so this is the yarn type that I might use in the future which I used on that one just to save you doing the twisting I'm not sure I quite like the effect of this plain one as you can see it's not um it's not twisted like the other one both are tricky to like both are a little bit fiddly to apply so there's not much difference it's just in the looks so once you've done those four, then I'm going to, I just cut the end off to make my life a bit easier. So cut quite a long section. And then I'm just going to fill in 
as it fans round and you want it to sort of keep angling back towards the center so you might have to overlay it and cross over as you go back towards the center and just fill it in as neatly as possible but that gives the appearance of it sort of fanning round in a circle so quite quite a nice little yeah quite like that there you see it looks good and then um start again and do the next one and so all that middle bit is going to be covered up so you know you don't have that doesn't have to be super neat so fill in the other ones and I'll see you in a minute so here we are all filled in quite a simple effect it is a little bit annoying because it's not that visible <laughs> when you put the mushroom uh, all finished on, on say on a table or something so uh but I think it's a, it's a nice effect to have. So we're going to attach the top to the mushroom. If your pipe cleaner is sticking up a bit, just push it down a bit with your finger like I just did then. Fan out the wool so that you've got a little bit to help you. You could have it attached at an angle and then people could see the gills a bit better. <laughs> I'm going to attach mine mostly straight, but then you can even tilt it a bit because you've got the pipe cleaner afterwards. So you've got a degree of uh, being able to shape it a tiny bit. So we're going to work in right around the very base with the 32 needle. And we're just going to work around and loosely attach it. And then we're going to take some wool um, and wrap it around and that will attach it really firmly. So don't spend ages on this. Just loosely attach it. Mine was slightly skewer, so you can just move it, pull it off and move it a bit. Make sure it's central. And then lots of stabs downwards right at that base bit. I'm trying to show you so I can hold it there and stab it. If you want it an, at an angle, hold it at the angle you want it and felt it and it will felt. So it's even now, it's a tiny bit attached already. So take some slither, split it because you definitely want it to be a little bit thinner. doesn't matter if it overlaps as it goes round. And then you're going to put it right down in the base there. So <clears throat> the pre-felt that you've got at the side there is going to cover the top of the stalk. That's fine. But you don't want the wool over the gills to show too much because that would be visible. But you do need a little bit just to attach it. So just wrap it round and then felt through. And again, you do have to spend, a, I'd say, a good five to eight minutes working all the way around and working this wool in so I said you don't want it coming out too far there because that will be visible but the bit going down the stalk is fine because you're going to cover that up so yeah spend a bit of time really felting this in it gives you a really strong firm attachment and yes it's going to look a little bit um like there's a little bit of a dip at the top so like I said that's going to be covered up but yeah work it all the way around there we go so yes it's got a little bit of a dip in but that's fine that's going to be covered so we are going to attach this bit so I'm just checking and actually it really was a tiny bit too long you kind of want them to meet sort of and fold down together would be nice so I've just trimmed off a little bit and then pop it in so you want it right up to the top of the mushroom and you're just going to felt it through I'm checking which way is front and back of my mushroom which spots I like the most that I want to appear at the front so do sort of face up your mushroom and then we're going to felt right at the top. So I pushed it in a bit so I had a little tiny bit of a um, an overlap as it sort of went into the top there, but not much at all. And then I've just felt it in and I'm felting the front bit so I know that's so I know where the back's going to be, shall we say. So wrap it back round and you are only going to felt the seam at the back. So felt one bit down if it's a little bit fiddly. And the very top of it where it joins the mushroom. Do not felt the rest of it yet because we're going to do a design on it. Don't felt that area. So. 
<laughs> it was a bit fiddly to try and get it on shot as well to show you. So there we go, felt that over. So felt the seam as it goes up. That's absolutely fine to felt that bit and you need to to make sure it stays on. And then felt just right around the top. But do felt the top of it. You want the top of it to stay on. So there we go. So there, there's the join. You could cover that up with a piece of wool or you could use it as one of the um, frill, frill bits that we're going to do, which I think I do with this one. I make that one of the lines. So go right around the top there so it sort of is definitely attached. There we go, it doesn't take long. And again, I'm using the 32 needle. So that's great. So now I'm taking a 36 or a 38. It doesn't matter too much, but definitely not the big needle. The big needle doesn't uh, line it up as easily and literally felt down in a line. And then I go to the bottom and felt upwards exactly like I'm doing here. I'm really going right upwards towards the felt and then back along that line again. And that gives you a nice little uh, gill mark going down or uh, what they called frill. I can't remember. I'll have to look up the name of them. So I'm going about an inch apart for them. And afterwards, I do go back and make all these lines a little bit longer because I think it looks a bit better. So I go down a bit and then stop, turn it round, felt upwards. And it just creates that nice little bump shape. And you're going to do this all the way around and see how I'll probably use the seam mark as one of those lines going down. So just work your way all the way around. I've speeded it up. It's quite nice to watch it speed it up. So here we are, I've just added a little bit more on the top of each of the lines because I think it gives it a more complete picture. Otherwise it looked a bit bumpy further up the top. So it definitely made it look a lot better. I think that's the seam mark there. It doesn't matter if a couple of them are closer, which they are there at the back. So there we go. And you can angle it a bit. And then I just pulled a little bit of the edges out. You can sort of pull them out a bit don't have to just gives it a little bit of an upward curve which is quite nice so that is your mushroom done so now we're going to do the base now for the base I did give you enough um, <clears throat> cheviot slithers or core wool whatever you like to call it to do the inside of the base in white and then we're going to cover it because you can felt downwards it doesn't matter if the white came through on the underside because you're going to stick that to the wood slice so this is the mound I did this mound a little bit high, so I'm going to try and do it a little bit lower this time round. So pretty similar to how you did the top of the mushroom, but a lot looser and a lot flatter and wider straight away. So you can see already I've made this quite big. You don't want the mound to go high straight away like you did with the mushroom top. So this is really squidgy. <laughs> but I'm trying to just make it into a sort of a, a large round base. But um, it's okay for it to be slightly smaller than your wood slice. It's fine if the edges hang over, because once you add the green, they'll definitely sort of hang over a little bit. But it is nice to see a bit of the wood slice, <clears throat> the edge bit, but you don't want to be seeing too much of that light coloured part of the middle of the wood slice. So I'm taking the 32 and I'm just working my way all the way through it. Now, um, I must admit, this does take a while to firm up, which is really annoying because you think, well, I'm nearly there. But um, it's worth doing. And then if you go around the edges now, you stop it from um, falling out too. So it's much bigger than the wood slice. So felt it inwards a bit, felt the underside and work your way all the way over. Um, take your time. You don't have to firm it up really well at this point because we're going to add the green and then we're going to spend ages firming it up. But 
it is quite fluffy at this stage so you really do need to work it so take your green which is I think it's Bowden and that's how we're just going to sort of cover it over the mound so take a section that's wide enough to go around and just to the edges to the underside of the mound and I would just go over the top and then cover the little gaps at the edges and because the color is a mixed color um, the joins don't really show that much at all so it works really well so just sort of pop it under the edges so it's still quite fluffy here and we're going to firm it up it does need to be firm because you're going to um, attach your mushroom to it. So those are the edge bits. Just place a little bit around the edge there. And the underside is still a little bit white. That's absolutely fine because that's going to be glued down. So no one's going to see that. Definitely big enough. And just one more edge bit to cover up there. There we go. And now I'm taking my time and just working my way all the way over it. It's almost as much time as the mushroom top trying to get this firm. But you're going to be adding grass into it. You're going to be adding the mushroom into it. Sorry if you can hear my dog paws on the, on the wood floor. Um, so yeah, I do work from the underside um, and firm that all up as well. And it doesn't sort of felt through to the top because it's so thick but yeah it's going to take you a good 30 40 minutes to firm this all up a bit and as you get to the edges <clears throat> it's absolutely fine again it was getting a little bit wide so I just felt these edges back in a bit to stop it from floofing out too much you can see it's quite fluffy and, and woolly there isn't it so quite a bit of work to do. Checking for size all the time and then back to the top. So when you get to the edges, you do want them to just sort of fall away and fall down. You don't need rounded edges like you did with the mushroom. You can literally sort of felt from the top for the edges. You don't need to um, felt underneath too much. Just show you here. So yeah, nice sort of curve to it. Do the underside. So there we go. I've gone all the way over it. I'm just finishing the edges here just to show you. And you can literally just felt the edges down. And then once they're on the wood log, they'll look quite nice. So there we go. You can see they're just sort of fall away and so when you put it on the wood slice it's fine even if there's a tiny bit of fluff at the edges you definitely need the middle bit to be firm because that's where you're going to attach the mushroom so we'll finish the edge bits and then we're going to attach we're going to make the ferns and do the locks so there we go so that's all done that's fine you see how it's sort of sort of is a bit fluffy at the edges so we're going to do the little fern bits and we're going to take um, these are those bits there that you can do whatever shape you want them to be but I quite like them sort of curled up and this is a uh, tops wool this is calm I think it is from world of wool and you need a tiny amount I've, I've given you loads um, really thin little section and I start three quarters of the way down the pipe cleaner now wrap those little bits they're tiny but wrap them around it just literally secures it on and then start twisting the pipe cleaner and feeding it on you almost have it at a 45 degree angle in through your hand to help you get the upward movement and it you know it's such a small amount you think it's probably not enough but if you have too much, it'll be bumpy and lumpy. And see there, there was starting to get a little bit bumpy. And I know that I don't need all of that. And so you just pull off the, the stuff as you get closer to the top. Just pull off what you don't want. And this, it, I know it might make it look easy. 
practice it a couple of times it shouldn't be too bad but a very small amount is all you need and then I just keep twisting and twisting the ends in and it, it, it almost stays on its own but I would then take the 38 is probably better and just gently felt just to the side of the pipe cleaner you might get a few frilly bits coming out don't worry a few fluffy bits just um, we're going to roll it between our hands in a minute I just like to know that it's felted a teeny bit so it will definitely stay on and just a tiny few felts as you go along just to the edge of it and then I would definitely roll it between my hands that gets in all the bits and it starts to felt it a bit as well and that is honestly literally it take the top twist it round and back on itself as many times as you want and it's done so that's super easy and then just give it a little curl round and that's how it's going to go and we're going to sort of felt it on felt the base on and then give it a little felt onto the side of the mushroom let's just made it a bit more curlier and there we go so do another one there we go so we've got two and this is one I did where I just took a bit of the calm and I put that up the side of the mushroom so you can play around with these mushrooms this was the first prototype I did with different wool as well so you can do lots of effects but I quite like the locks going up the mushroom so we're going to attach them now because it's a lot easier to attach them now than when you've attached it to the mound and then we're going to put um, the ferns on once it's on the mound I think so we are going to leave a gap for the ferns wherever they're going to go I would obviously suggest they go at the front and you know where the back is because you've got your join on the uh, pre felt that you put on and so you just take the locks and um, start sort of attaching them upwards now some of the locks have a tiny bit of a hard um, end I'll just show you a little bit closer you can literally cut that off or you can pull it off it's where it's overly dried and they go a little bit crispy and hard but you can you can cut them off or you can literally just pull them off I was pulling them off with my hand towards the end um, so you might not be able to felt those tiny little hard bits but the these locks are the perfect color for what we want to do and so um, try and yeah don't go right to the bottom because you're going you're going to attach the bottom bit into the base so you can go up by about half a centimeter so as you take a lock I would get the pointy tips going upwards and I sort of fold them in half I'm just cutting off those um, hard end bits and I fold the locks in half and then put those pointy bits sort of going upwards try not to pull the locks apart too much because when you pull the locks you'll lose some of that curliness um, if you need to separate them from the clump just trim them is probably best so here we are just working my way around they don't need much attaching with you know with the needle when you're felting them they sort of felt on really easily so you don't have to overly felt them flat and you want them to be a little bit bumpy so I've left a gap for the two ferns there uh, however I'm going to attach them and I think we'll attach the mushroom to the base first and then we'll attach them so here we go attaching so I like to cut a little hole in the top with a pair of scissors you don't have to and you could just go straight on with attaching it to the top but I like it to just sit in a little bit however saying that it's quite tricky to cut a hole into the top you probably need a smaller pair of scissors than a big pair and don't go all the way through I'm literally just taking out <clears throat> about a centimeter that's the the depth I'm going down so I cut a little um, cross in it pull it out a bit and then go round in a circle and trim those edge bits off and I just think it gives your mushroom something to sit into which makes it easier to attach and obviously the white wool is going to be showing but we're going to cover it all up with the uh, green wool but as you can see it's, it's quite tricky <laughs> it's actually quite tricky just getting in once you're in it's not too bad so literally just a small circle going in a little bit 
but as I said don't go all the way through because you need some wool underneath to attach your mushroom to just wanted to take out a little bit more it was a little bit chunky just there there we go so that is absolutely perfect it just gives it something to sit down into which I think is good so we're going to take our needle and we're going to felt in right through the very base take the 32 because you're going to be quite close to the pipe cleaner at times and just felt right through the base so this was a bit tricky to show you when the camera's above and I wish I'd turned it to the side but it's kind of obvious you're going to be felting right down in through there so work your way all the way around once then we're going to take some uh, Bowden take some of the carded wool I think it's the Bowden and um, wrap that around it because we're going to cover that area up with grass so I'm still felting in and down through that bit there so nice thick piece um, I didn't cut the slither in half sort of lengthways or anything I just used a whole thick piece because we really want this to be well attached and wrap it round and again it's right down at the base try not to cover your locks up too much and just overlap it round and then just felt through so let me just show you it <clears throat> so as you can see it's wrapped all the way around and we're going to spend quite a bit of time firming that up if yours isn't firm enough add another layer of the Bowden I think mine was all right with just one layer but yes you know spend a good five minutes see even there I've got to spend a lot more time working my way all the way around it so there we go so that's worked all the way around it's nice and firm you can give it a, 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 a pull and check it's attached add some more if you need to so we're going to add the ferns and just cut off all the white that you've got left leave yourself a little tail at the bottom to um, we're going to put some wool over the top of that to attach it to the mushroom so I'm going to pop both on at once you could do one at a time and definitely use the 32 needle because you're going to be near the pipe cleaner and then take some of the carded Bowden place it over the top and then you're going to felt all the way around it trying to mind the pipe cleaners and this really helps secure the base and then we're going to felt um, with the finer needle some of the uh, top of the ferns onto the mushroom but yeah this just keeps the base in nice and firm if there's a little bit of the white showing um, see I had a little bit of white showing there for the base of the pipe cleaner it doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it with grass or just put a bit more of the Bowden wool on the top and now you can see I've really felt it around the wire there and then take a finer needle 36 or 38 and very gently felt through the edge of the pipe cleaner don't hit the pipe cleaner you're going just to the edge of it just to the sides and you don't need to do much at all and it just felts them back on into the shape you want and then I do sort of press them and shape them there you can shape them around the mushroom a little bit and then they don't sort of stick out but it's only a tiny bit of felting there we go so they are on and we're just going to fill in those edge bits with some locks you don't have to fill if you've used all your locks on the rest of the mushroom it's fine but um, because the grass will probably cover it but you should have more than enough locks to be able to keep some over to fill just around there So there we go so that's all of that and now we're going to do the grass we are so nearly finished so I've supplied you with this green wool unravel it and wrap it around your fingers keeping your fingers quite wide so that we can cut it all in one go and make your life a lot easier so wrap 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 all the way around the whole lot and it's probably at least four inches width and then take some scissors probably bigger scissors would have done it quicker 
and cut one end, straighten it out and then cut in the middle and this will give you your grass lengths and actually the second set of grass we're going to cut one of these in half again. But so start by taking a small clump, you're probably going to need about six clumps or seven to go all the way round but you don't need to put them sort of right up to each other so hold um, hold it right into the base and you're going to go halfway through and you're just going to felt in a line down so that's going to attach it and then you're going to once it's it doesn't take much to attach as well just felt through a couple of times and then fold them upwards and then felt very close to the base just to make them stay up so that works quite well so you're probably going to need at least six clumps to sort of go all the way around but they don't have to be like adjacent to each other so you can leave little gaps in between and work your way all the way around and this is the first inner layer and then we're going to do an outer layer that's even shorter so exactly the same nice clump halfway through felt it down into the base I tend to hold one side because they sort of the wool gets in the way <clears throat> and some can sort of be felted in a bit too much sometimes so I do tend to hold one side so there we go and then I'll just show you this again fold them up and then felt through the base There we go, nice and easy. Um, and so work your way all the way around for one layer. And uh, if you had any of your own green yarns at home, you could add to it and do a mixture. But it does look fine with just this one. But the first prototype I did, I had three different colours. So we've gone all the way around once and now we're going to do a front layer which is half the size so take a section off cut it in half and then in front of it you're just going to do exactly the same it's even quicker to attach because there's barely any and you don't need to sort of fold them back and up because they just stick up really well so that's your front layer and then if you've got any particularly long bits you can sort of trim them but my grass looked Okay, I was really happy with it. Yeah, there's a few long bits. I could have trimmed them down a bit, but. And so lastly, we are going to attach the mushroom to the base. So normally I would just use some glue, Bostic all-purpose glue, splodge around there, stick it on. But I didn't know how to supply that in kits. So I've got this double-sided tape and you'll get it on this plastic piece. So it will peel off. There's almost two layers of it, but that's the layer you you want the top layer. I had to put another layer underneath so it would peel off it for you. So that's sticky. So I would cut that in half and then you're going to put two half sections on the base. So here we that's me getting it off my roll that I've got. So the first bit you're just going to do to one side and you don't want the glue to go over the edge, the, the double-sided tape to go too far over to the edge. So place one bit on and then you can peel off. Just go to the edge and peel it with your finger and it should come off. And then do the next bit. And they're going to overlap slightly just because of the shape. Um, that's maybe sticking out a bit too much, but then it wasn't that bad, so I left it. So make sure it's down and peel that side off. You do have to peel the white off before you attach the second piece, obviously, because you're overlapping. And that's it. It's ready. And just place your mushroom exactly how you want it. Press down and it's attached nice and easy. So your mushroom is finished. And I think it's a great kit because everything's in there for you makes your life really really simple really good effects um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this I do have other kits in my Etsy shop please do go and have a look I will link my Etsy shop kits playlist up here 
but thank you for watching and I have tons of other mushrooms as well other mushroom videos so do go and have a look but yeah I really hope you've enjoyed this kit thank you for being here with me and if you bought the kit thank you for supporting the business take care everybody and see you again soon bye